Hello and welcome. My name is Yves Sanford, Fraud VCDX number 203, CEO of the Comdivision Group. And today I'm going to go and do a rather really quick video on how to do an upgrade from VROP 6 to 6.2 and some of the caveats I found while I was doing it. So the first thing you have to do is you log into the admin user interface of your VROP instance and then you upload the pack file. Um, be careful, depending on what you are upgrading, you might need to first install the OS, install, uh, OS version and then the um, actual pack file for the um, appliance itself. So check always the latest uh, release notes for that. So once you have uploaded the pack file to your instance, you can basically um, process it and then you hit next to get the upgrade started. So um, again, read the end user license agreement, validate that that all makes sense for you and then let the installation procedure work. In my case, one of the weird things I found when I was running this for VROP 6.2 is that at one point in time it just dropped out of this process over here and um, kicked me out of the window. Um, probably there is a timeout and if it doesn't actually get through it fast enough it's going to kick you. It was a bit awkward but um, what I did from here is actually I went then back into the system. So this was the error I got and then I just actually uh, revamped the admin homepage and logged into the admin page again. I knew from prior migrations of previous versions from 5.x to 6.2 that I had seen similar events and then you were to just go back in here and see what the current status is. In our case you can see here that the cluster is offline or it's just a one node cluster but it was offline. And then if you move on to the software update page you can actually see that the installation is still in full progress and uh, you can also see that it has completed one out of nine stages in this scenario and uh, then you can just actually wait uh, here and see how the process continues and moves on. So uh, step by step it will go through it um, still even if it breaks. The worst case scenario what you could do I, I guess in this uh, case is you were to just actually stop it or reboot the VM or something like that. So before you do that always be sure to go back in here and validate what's going on. As you can see it moves along. We are now in stage 3 of 9, 6 of 9 so it slowly but steadily moves from one step to the next and it's a rather straightforward process. This is a single node system as I said before so it's not actually going to do that much with it. Um, the point what you need to keep in mind is if you have a bigger implementation or installation where for example instead of one node you have multiple nodes you need to manually make the take the cluster down or you should at least take the cluster down before you run the install instead of actually trying to do all that in, in one big chunk and then it will take care of the distribution of the components on the individual cluster pieces and make sure that that works. So as you have seen while I was talking we are now at step 7 of 9 and slowly but steadily we move through it and um, get to the final confirmation page. And that's what we are aiming for. So depending on the size of your installation and the size of the update and as I said if whether it's an OS update and an application update or just an application update it might take a bit longer here and there um, but overall my experience it's um, 10, 15, 30 minutes, maybe an hour but I haven't really seen it take much longer than an hour um, on any of the implementations. Okay, as we can see now, the installation is um, completed. So the next thing from here would actually be to validate that the update was actually processed and the system is running perfectly fine. One keynote um, before you actually do upgrades um, in the future, be sure to always check the release notes on what they are going to upgrade. Um, I remember back in the 5.x days there were a scenario where they had to update the data structure and you don't want to have a snapshot on your system for that then you can also do a clone because it's basically going to um, take all your individual instances and check that they are working. 
Okay, let's go to the system status, validate that the system is uh, back online. That's what we just did and you can see everything is green. Uh, now we are going to log in, which could be either from a local user or one of your LDAP users to validate um, the system is up and running and processing data again. So log in, oopsie, um, and then once you're in the system, I guess it's pretty straightforward. We don't need to really validate that much. I mean, I always suggest to customers to always check at least that adapters and plugins and everything are still up and running. This one is actually new. 6.2 actually includes now the CIEP, so the Customer Experience Improvement Program. And this is instance is really for my test purposes. There is no reason that um, pushing data over to VMware would be of any value. So we are going to remove the checkbox, hit the OK button, and we are good to go. So back into the system, what we are going to check now is that the version has been updated correctly. So we basically go to help, oh no, not help, forget it. Um, we are just going to click about, we see version 6.2 and that means um, the upgrade went pretty well for us. That's it. My name is Yves Sanford, I'm CEO of the Comdivision Group and also VZDX number 203. If you want to reach out to me, my Twitter handle is at Yves Sanford and my email address is y.sanford at comdivision.com. Thanks and goodbye.